Welcome to this short series where I am going to show you how you could have solved the CTF or the live CTF challenge. So I'm going to start from the very beginning and how I envisaged that this particular task would have been um, solved. So first of all um, I've got the two VMs running here. One is the actual server and the other is a Kali machine. Um, so one is effectively the victim and one is the attacker. Uh, the victim, I don't know the login credentials at this stage, um, so I'm trying to access it through the front um, login system obviously couldn't be done. So I'm actually going to try and attack this machine from behind the scenes. So the first thing you can see in the Kali Linux um, side um, here over to the right is the fact that I've done an IPA in other words I've tried to find the actual IP address of this machine and you can see that effectively that IP address is 192.168.1.8 and I'm presuming at this time that this particular machine is sitting on the same network as this one. So the very first thing that I'd need to do is a reconnaissance of the network so I need to see what other systems are available on this network and for that I'm going to use Nmap. So with Nmap I've got a number of instructions I could use here but I'm going to try the very uh, most simplest one um, which is looking at the services um, and the version. I don't know the IP address of this machine at this time but I do know the IP address of this current machine so what I'm going to do here is I'm telling it to actually scan this machine but also all the other machines within the same subnet as this machine which is a 24-bit subnet so therefore it's 255, 255, 255 and 0 um, and that will basically tell me all the machines around this current system that I need to locate. So I'm just going to press enter here and it will take a couple of minutes for this to complete. Um, side note here, if I wanted to refer to this and didn't want to keep running nmap continually I could obviously store all the information into a file which I can then review later on and this is actually very good practice um, when you're working on a live system because if you're actually working on a client system and trying to scan their network you don't have to be running nmap too often because this would actually get picked up by the intrusion detection system but as this is a closed network um, I'm not too worried about it at this time. So now the scan's completed you can actually see um, that the very first machine which we know already is our Kali Linux box in other words this uh, system here and you can see all the ports are closed um, and it's fully aware that the system is available so you can see that it is up but effectively can't scan any of the ports on this machine. And the next scan further down is of this system 192.168.1.10 and again it's scanned a number of ports which are closed however we have two ports which are open. One is port 22 and the other is port 80. Port 22 is actually uh, SSH which allows us remote access into this machine um, normally it would be good practice to disable this service but however on this particular server it is actually open and we can also see that port 80 is also open running HTTP and it's running the Apache um, library so therefore we know there's a web page or a web service in effect or running on this system so straight away I'm going to go straight to the browser here So we still haven't got the login details, but now that I know we have these two services, then I can actually look at these in greater detail. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at 192.168.1.10, and we know that this is a HTTP, so I'm going to make sure that's HTTP there. 
and we're going to see if we actually get anything and we can see straight away that there is um, a web page uh, running on this page so it's got the title here uh, we've got this picture here which says move along nothing to see and we've also got this um, old college logo and just over here we got this small message and we can see that CTF player is actually being highlighted in italics here so hi CTF player your journey starts here so CTF player is a piece of information that we want to remember we've got this shush but normally um, you would expect to see this SH with a series of H's um, but we have actually got this SSH version of shush so again this is a, a little bit of a clue and it actually tells us in full that to use this or to find the target we need to state the username then the at symbol and then the IP so basically the whole of this is telling us that we're using SSH and this is how we would log into that so now that we've got that idea that it's saying user at IP um, I wouldn't suggest that user is the actual uh, logging um, person um, I would probably guess that CTF player is the logging person at this stage so they're the user so we'll we'll keep that in mind but we've got a small puzzle here and this is effectively where the CTF starts so imagine your friends have locked you out of the room you are banging on the door what would you shout now obviously there's a lot of um, potential answers here but there's a lot of a gap between the what you sh uh, what would you shout and the end there's a bit of a gap here and normally you would expect that an answer would appear somewhere in this region um, if this was more interactive and if I click it there's not actually anything here but if I double click it you can see that it's just highlighted let me in so we've got CTF player we've got let me in which has been hidden here uh, another way you could have found this information out is if I went into the source code and you can see what would you shout here and then you can see in white it's got let me in so either way we've now got a potential password and a potential username so now that we've got those two pieces of information let's see if we can actually access this SSH um, which stands for secure shell and let's see if we can actually access this now so um, SSH and we've got the CTF player at 192.168.1 and dot 10 is the machine we're trying to remote access into it says are you sure you wish to connect so yes I do and now it's going to ask me for the password and I'm going to put in the one that I think it is which is L E T M E I N for let me in and there we go we now have access to this machine and we know it's the machine because we can see that it's saying here at fort and we can see here that it says the fort login so we now have access to that machine so if I was to do ls at this stage I can see that I've got a, a file and also a folder to have a look at so before we go to the file let's have a look at the folder so if I do cd simple I can access this folder and we've got some more files in here and if I just ignore the flag for the moment and go to secret we can't access that particular folder so there's a folder here but we can't access it just yet so if I just clear the screen and do an ls so we have a password file and we have a flag well we are actually looking for flags so if I do a cat and flag 
we can see that we've found our very first flag um, with very little effort at all um, pretty straightforward we've got our first flag so I'd make a note of that and submit that so the next thing then is let's go back and have a look at the readme file and again I could use a text editor to have a look at this but I'm just going to use cat and there's a lot of information here so starting from the very beginning uh, it states no clues here and nothing but a comment here um, and we can see that the arrow is pointing to the right so a couple of things here first of all clues is plural there's more than one uh, comment is singular and we actually have two comment lines so it's saying no clues so there's no two clues here uh, only a comment here in this line however in this line we can see that there's an arrow pointing in the opposite direction to this one and we've got a few letters here now if we were to google these uh, letters uh, they wouldn't actually um, show us much but if you actually reverse them you can see that it's C C R Y P T and if I was to open up a web page and have a look at that you would see that this is actually a tool um, called Ccrypt which uh, can be used to encode and decode files so something definitely to make a note of uh, we've got a welcome message here and I'll come back to this a little bit later on um, but basically making sure that we understand that this is part of a challenge um, it gives us an idea of what the flags look like um, and then it also gives a nod to the folder that we saw earlier called simple so if we didn't actually see it before um, it does give a sort of a nod to that gives us some information about the rules and also make sure that you read all the comments again pointing back to our earlier clue it also gives us some examples of some of the instructions that we're going to rely on um, but it finishes with this uh, question um, and sends us on a mission to find a password file so the question here is what is the naval officer's rank with four stars in the UK? The idea would be that you would Google that and you would find out that the actual rank of the officer is Admiral. And now it tells us to have a look for that password file. Okay. Now I can tell you the password file is encrypted and we can see up here um, there is this clue to this crypt. Um, tool at the top so key information has been highlighted here something to not overlook is this comment here which is says Ghostbusters alert and look out for a ghost that disappears every minute so this is a bit of a strange uh, instruction but it is again another clue so first of all there's a lot of clues here so we're going to take each one in turn so we've already got the flag uh, really the next key or part of the mission is to elevate our um, login credentials um, closer to a root user and therefore we've then got full control of this system we've got that secret um, folder which we can't access at the moment so we need to get access to that so a couple of things to get us going so we've got that readme file we can come back to that a little bit later on so first of all let's go back to the simple and let's have a look at that and we can see here that we found the password file earlier and it's got a .cpt um, extension at the end 
First of all, let's have a look at the CC crypt. And like with most tools, there's generally a help that's available. So I'm just going to do hyphen hyphen help. And just to see if first of all this tool is installed but also if there's any help to it and it is installed so it is actually a tool and there is a help here that gives us an idea of what it is where uh, or how we can actually use it and we can see here cc crypt uh, secure encryption and decryption of files and streams so as I pointed out earlier, we do have this password file, which we were told to have a look at. And as it's called the password file and it's encrypted, we presume it's the password for Admiral. So Admiral was the answer to the uh, question we found earlier. So first of all, let's decrypt this. So to decrypt, we put in the CC, uh, ccrypt tool name. Then we pick the mode, so the modes can be encrypt or decrypt. And then we've got the options. So we've got a number of different options here. So we can uh, use any of these that we see fit. Uh, just having a look through um, these ones here. And then finally, we put in the file. So just having a quick look through these. Um, yeah, there's nothing here that really stands out to me that I need at this particular moment. So I'm going to try C crypt first of all and we don't want to encrypt, we want to decrypt, so we can just do hyphen D, or we could do hyphen hyphen decrypt if we wanted to do it that way. And we've got the password file. And if I press enter now, let's just see what we get. And it asks us for a decryption key. Now at this stage we haven't found the uh, decryption key. Um, there were many, many clues and various uh, things pointed out in the README file, but nothing that actually suggests to us a decryption key specifically. Um, but we do know what the login is for CTF player. So that is one password we do know. So let's just try that again, which was let me in. We don't get any information back to say whether that was successful. However, if we do ls, we now have a password file without the CPT. And also, if you note, there is actually a file there now that has appeared called the ghost file. So if I clear that and do ls again, that ghost file has now disappeared. So it says that it appears every minute. Uh, so that is a strong clue to how long we'd have to wait for that file to come back. So in the meantime, we can do a cat on the password file. And there we go. We now have the password for the next user. So I am going to do another LS again. And we can see now that the ghost has come back. So I'm also going to cap the ghost because it does disappear after a certain period of time. So it is important to catch it right. And it says here, hello and welcome to the fort. Maybe it is time to see what services we offer. Hmm. Checking to see the file disappears. It is a ghost file. How is this possible? So it's basically saying, I'm making this file appear and then disappear. As you can see now, it's now disappeared again. How is this possible? How am I actually doing this? And it actually gives you a base 64 uh, encryption here. And if you decode it, it actually highlights two services for you. It, it uh, highlights cron 
and cron tab. And you can Google both of these um, out to find out what they are. And I can tell you that they are to do with scheduling tasks within Linux. So if I put that to one side for the moment, um, or actually, if I show you what a contab looks like, um, for contab um, or cron table, it will, I need a hyphen E, and this will actually give you an idea, and I can explain what this is. So this is the cron tab, as you can see, it's a file, and basically we use it for scheduling, and we can set things up for um, minutes, seconds, uh, days, weeks, any task that we want uh, the system to repeat, um, or any command we want the system to trigger, will be done over a period of time, and you can see it breaks down here. At, in this particular user, there isn't actually any cron being set up or any schedule being set up because we can see that because all of these are comments, there's no actual commands here. Um, what I can tell you is that a cron is available for every user, so what we should do is check the cron for each user as we go through. So I'm just going to exit this one for the moment. And what we're now going to do, now we've got the um, password change me. I can now try to switch user to Admiral. It asks for a password. I can go change me. And I am now, if I was to do who am I? I am now Admiral. So I have now moved from CTF player. I am now Admiral. Um, however, if I now try to ls in this particular location, it will tell me that I haven't got permission because this area is secured for CTF player. So even though there is a folder in here, um, which Admiral could effectively look at, where I am at the moment is secured to the CTF player. So we, we have a few permission issues that we still yet to solve. So what I need to do is have a look at an area that Admiral can't see. And to do that, I'm going to go to the Admiral's home directory. And to get to that, I will do CD. If I clear the screen, you can see the file structure, hopefully that you're aware of as being Linux. Um, Coincidentally, if I try to access root, I'll not be allowed, but I can access home and I can see there's a number of users here. So if I go to CD Admiral, I'm now in the Admirals folder. So I'm now in the Admirals home folder and there's another readme file. So if I read this file, again, I get some more confirmation I'm on the right track. Um, excellent effort to reach this far. The goal is to become root, uh, as sudo will only get you so far. So it suggests that Admiral can be used to do sudo elevations. Um, there are some folders and files you couldn't access solve the clues and puzzles to be able to get the root password. Take note that when you were CTF player, there was places you couldn't go. They may deserve a revisit. So just basically highlighting that there was this folder called secret that I couldn't access before. And at a particular point in time, it would be good if I go back there. Now there is a snap folder here, but that's actually nothing. Um, nothing specifically um, to do with um, the challenge itself. They're just actual software applications that are installed under Admiral. So nothing for us to worry about just yet. But it says solve the clues and puzzles. So 
they suggest that there are some clues and puzzles on this system and I'm now Admiral so it would be good to have a look around the system to find out. Now previously when before we actually got here we could see that this was running a particular website so one of the things that's always worthwhile doing is having a closer look at that website so to find it I would go into bar so into the var folders and once there uh, I can see www so let's go www and once here I've got a HTML folder and once in here I now have all the components of the particular website so now that I'm here I can have a look at some of these files obviously index if I was to cat the index that's the web page that we started with and that led us into this system uh, we've also got this robot folder so let's have a look in here uh, sorry folder not directory and it gives us a little bit of a message here um, robots if you don't know is a file that you can put into your website to effectively tell search engine robots not to scan certain directories of your website and it says this allow um, forward slash CSS which is the CSS folder and then it gives us a little nod to say that we're on the right track so effectively we've been told not to um, scan CSS or that's a clue potentially so if we go to the CSS folder we can actually access it but there's just a paid CSS in here and if I was to have a look at the contents it just gives us um, the CSS for our web page but again here is our second flag is here so we found our second flag pretty straightforward um, to find that here we were given some nod to where it would be so we've got our second one so now that we've got two of the flags we can have a look a little bit further and we'll do this in order so we can do images and by looking at the images we can see there's some image files here we have that nothing to see we have the logo we have this other hcjpeg so a couple of files here to look at so if i was to do a list of the directory you can see um, all the files and the thing to note here is the size of these files so you've got eight, um, 84,000 bytes here, 35,000, but then you've got this one which is really large. So there is a system or a process called um, steganography. And if you've done the previous challenges, one of the things I would try and do is have a look and see if there is anything in hidden in any of these files. Um, I would start if, with the largest so we're going to start with uh, the largest so first of all um, we're going to look if there is a particular app called Steg Hide on here and there is so we do have the application actually already installed on the server so if we just go through some of the instructions here what we want to do is um, well one of the things we're going to want to do is find the covering file which is obviously the picture and the steg file being the hidden file and we want to find out some info um, so we can do info 
and then the file name. So let's uh, try that first of all. So stick hide info and let's try HC JPEG first of all. And it's a JPEG format and it's capacity is about 12k uh, do we want to try and get some information here so let's put in yes now it's going to enter what do you think our passphrase would be so one of the passphrases we could try is change me which was the um, password that we used for admiral and we didn't get anything using that. We can try that again. Let's try let me in. And we still didn't get anything from that. Um, we could try uh, Admiral. Uh, still nothing from there. Uh, let's give it one more try. Let's do CTF player and nothing in there. So even though the file is large, hc.jpg is large, there isn't actually anything within that particular file that we can instantly file from the information we've got at the moment. So let's try the same technique with logo. And notice that the logo is JPEG with an E. And this time, let's try let me in. And straight away, it's been able to find that there is an embedded text file here. I can't extract it here, but what I could do is if I come back to the website here and uh, I believe it's this image that I'm trying to download so if I um, save this here go into my folder I've got that I've got the picture here and if I open the terminal so this now is actually the Kali Linux so I'm not actually um, currently in that shell and I think Steg Hide is on here also which it is so if I do Extract and on the stick file being um, so the logo and let me in and there we go. It, it's allowed me now to extract the file and you can see that HC text is there. So if I now cut HC text I now have a base 64 that if I was to um, decode this I'll just do this uh, off screen so So I'm going to I two H J Y three R M capital M J capital A Y capital M Y capital E equals. If I was to decode that, it actually gives me this. 
hash hc ctf 2023 exclamation mark done so that's what it gives me um, here and that looks like a password to me um, could be used so I've got that uh, piece of information now so if I go back to the SSH now that I've decoded that and I've got that information to hand um, this may well give me a clue to a, another user's password and as I haven't really been given any indication of another user I'm going to try it with the root and again hash hcctf2023 exclamation mark better known as a bang in the Linux world and that has given me full root access so now that I am fully root I can do a lot more here than I couldn't do before so if I was to go back to our previous um, efforts to um, decode HC logo so if I do HF HC underscore logo let me in and you can see now it has allowed me to write that information where it wouldn't have done that before because I was only um, doing it as Admiral um, one of the alternative solutions if I was to switch back to Admiral and the other solution or the other way that I could have done is use the sudo here and actually use steg hide as, uh, as a sudo and that would have also done it as well which I didn't try but uh, let's get back to root which is hash hc ctf2023 and then exclamation mark so now that I've got that here I am now the root user I can go back one from the images now I've got the uh, the login credentials I'm looking for um, we've looked at images we've looked at all of the files except for one folder which was media so I'm gonna have a quick look in media and I can see that there is a sound wave in media um, there's not much I can do with that file here um, on SSH but if I was to go back to my Kali machine bearing in mind that I'm looking in the media folder so if I was to go back to the Kali machine here and if I was to do slash media it brings me to this file I can now click this file here it's downloaded it so I can open the folder with this file if I double click it um, there is an application in Kali called uh, Sonic Visualizer so I'm going to click OK and now I can play this file here so obviously I'm playing this in a virtual box so there's a bit of uh, lag and difficulty reading this particular file but it gives me a file here that I can look at so stop that stop that playing yeah I think that's done right so one of the things I can do with this particular application is I can change the way we view audio and at the moment we're just playing it as a as a sound wave 
but what I really want to do is have a look at it through um, a spectrum so um, if I remember how this is done I can go to spectrograph and I'll add one for the sound wave and here we go you can see root is here and you can also see that the credentials is down here so um, if I zoom in you can see uh, just about HC CTF 2023 um, if I was to make this full screen so hash there if I just keep on there we go hash HC CTF 2023 exclamation mark so again confirming that the root is that so there was another clue that was there in the sound file so we are clearly root user now we found everything here we've even got a flag from the CSS file so now that we've done that we can uh, go back to the home first of all so if I go to home and I can go to CTF player and I can go into the simple and I can also go into the secret and there is another flag there that I can now read as well and there we go we found a, another flag that we can now um, submit uh, one of the things I didn't do as Admiral which was check for the scheduler but I'm actually going to do that here for root so I'm going to do cron tab hyphen e which allows me to edit and here we go we can now look at the cron tab but this is for the root user and um, we can clearly see in here there is another flag here hidden and you can see how that ghost file was initially created so this was how the ghost file worked where you can see every minute um, it would run this script in the root folder and by running this script um, but here when it rebooted it would actually delete this ghost and presumably this script is what's responsible for creating the ghost every minute as we can see that it's set to one minute so we need really to have a closer look at this message.sh so we've got our third flag I believe so what we need to do is get to the root folder so if I do cd and then root and we've got a few files here but we're going to go straight for this message.sh first of all so message.sh and we can see a few things here so if I go to the very top it says hello and welcome to the fort um, it gives us um, the folder in which this text is going to be written to which is that ghost file so you can see that the ghost file this is how the ghost file effectively is constructed so it will actually create this file or recreate this file um, every minute it sleeps for about 30 seconds and then uh, it removes the file after 30 seconds so every minute it creates it and then every 30 seconds it deletes it so that's what gives it the illusion that that file is a ghost file and then it says a clue you can uh, change the attributes of files from folders in order uh, to chmod 
uh, CH own will allow you to own them and delete files and this will allows you to defend so it's actually giving you a clue to how you can go about defending certain files um, if you wanted to make it difficult for the opposing team so basically by being able to get to the root it gives you a clue to how you can defend yourself against other attackers down the bottom it again mentions cron and cron tab uh, controls the file creation of goals and if you can if you can't delete a file um, you can use this as an example um, so it's something you can have a look at basically it allows you to change attributes to stop accidental deletion of files and change permissions um, and making sure that only certain users can do certain things so um, this is something to look into and you could research that will help you again in your defense against being attacked so nothing more really in here i think we've got everything that we need from this um, particular file so if i go ls so we've got a couple of things here um, we've got the complete.sh and you can see that it's a slightly different color to the message.sh um, if I do MLS and all then again if you have a look at those files you can see that these files um, we can execute them where this particular file we can only read it and that's something to note for later on and if you know a little bit about Linux that should be pretty straightforward what needs to happen here um, we've got a few hidden files and we've got this vault uh, which is a folder here again I'm not too worried about snap if you were to look in snap just gives you an idea of some applications that have been installed on this system so if I back out of this and then go into the vault I can see that again there is a, another uh, encrypted file so I'm going to use ccrypt again and I'm going to use the uh, hyphen d to decrypt and then the file that we want to decrypt it'll ask us for a decryption key now um, this key could be let me in uh, which doesn't match uh, let's try the roots password which is hash hcctf2023 exclamation mark um, could not rename so the message has changed slightly so the very first time we did it it says the key doesn't match and then it just says unchanged and then this time it says could not rename readme cpt to readme the operation is not permitted so now that this file has been uh, decrypted uh, it couldn't be renamed to what it was originally which was readme however what I can now do is I can attempt to do a cat on that file which is what I'm going to do now and you can see I can now read the contents of that file and gives us the title here uh, well done that we've reached this far and we've collected all the flags uh, effectively we've now pawned the server we've got full control and we can now execute the completed script so there is a script call completed and we can now execute it and it gives us our final flag here so we can take that flag submit it that part is now done so now that we've accessed this and it's given us permission now to effectively run the completed script so what I'm going to do now is clear that go back a level and you can see now that the completed script is there however you can see that it is actually white which means that if I try to execute this it wouldn't actually work 
and if I do an LS all, you can see that it is actually only configured for um, reading only and not for execution so I can now as root try to do a or add the execute flag um, to this particular file so that I can actually execute it and you can see there now it has changed so if I do lsor you can now see that the color has now changed for the completed so I can now execute this uh, it would allow me but just before we execute it so let's have a quick look inside just to make sure there's nothing else hidden in here that we would need and sure enough it gives us a, a message welcome to uh, my server the fort please shut me down now uh, thanks uh, sleep for five echoes by sleeps for two and then does a shut down now so effectively it should shut this server down but before we've completed we can actually see here the final flag which we could have easily missed had we've just rushed off ahead and shut the server down so we can then submit that particular flag and then finally now now that we've done all of that we can now execute completed sh and we are not watching the Kali Linux but what we should be watching is the server over here so if I now execute that it says shut me down now thanks give it a couple of seconds it will say bye and now you can actually see that it's now shutting down the server we have totally owned that particular device okay so that was how the CTF challenge could have been solved so I hope you hopefully you found that useful um, do forward any comments um, if you need to ask any questions about it okay bye bye